No, it's not what you think. Please wait. On my way home from a night out, I was walking alone through the entertainment district when I saw Greg coming out of what looked like a very expensive hotel. Next to him was a woman I didn't know and a little boy. Why? How? What's going on? I couldn't process it for a moment. I was so confused that I didn't know what to say. It seemed like Greg was just as stunned. The bustling noise of the entertainment district filled my ears, making everything even more chaotic. So you had a family. I'm sorry. I said the first thing that came to mind, and then I quickly walked away. What am I supposed to do now? Did Greg change because he started a family with someone else? Trying to make sense of it all, I desperately walked away from the busy streets. Greg didn't come after me. My name is Karen Thompson, 35 years old. I work at a marketing firm, and though it's demanding, I enjoy my life. The company I work for isn't huge, but we get a fair amount of work. As a result, everyone, including myself, is constantly busy. Even so, I still find my work fulfilling. However, the stress of being so busy sometimes makes the whole company feel tense. I doubt there are many people who enjoy that kind of atmosphere. Being in such an intense atmosphere at work can sometimes become mentally exhausting. During those times, the one who always supported me was my husband, Greg. I first met Greg when we were both in kindergarten. He was in the same class as me. Neither of us were the shy type. After playing tag together, we quickly became friends. We played tag, hide and seek, drew pictures, and played with dolls. Pretty much every game kids love. Eventually, our parents also became close, and we started spending time together outside of kindergarten as well. We often played in the park near the kindergarten, or even went on family outings a little farther away. We continued to attend the same elementary and middle school. Although we had our share of arguments, and even drifted apart at times, our relationship never really changed. We were just ordinary childhood friends. Nothing more, nothing less. That comfortable distance between us felt just right. However, that life didn't last forever. In our second year of middle school, my family had to move due to my dad's jobs. I remember feeling anxious about living in a new place. I was sad about leaving my friends. And most of all, I cried because I had to say goodbye to Greg, my childhood friend. We'll see each other again someday. Greg said that, probably to comfort me as I sobbed uncontrollably. At the time, my middle school self took his words to heart. Yeah, we'll meet again. Definitely. I replied, crying, but trying my best to convey my feelings. Greg looked at me with gentle eyes. About four years later, I graduated from high school in the new town and enrolled in a local college. The thought of returning to live in my hometown filled me with excitement. By that time, I had already forgotten Greg's words. One day, shortly after I started college, I had a shocking reunion. There, on campus, was Greg. We noticed each other at the same time. Although we had grown and our appearances had changed, it didn't take long for us to recognize each other. That day, we decided to have dinner together. Because my last impression of Greg was stuck in our middle school days, I felt a bit nervous around the more mature version of him. It almost felt like I was talking to an older man I had just met for the first time. But it seemed I wasn't the only one feeling that way. Wow, you've really grown up. I was surprised. You too. Greg's eyes awkwardly shifted as he said that before he took a sip from his glass of water. 
Following his lead, I took a sip from my own glass. But that awkwardness only lasted at the beginning. As we talked, the tension melted away, and before long we were chatting like we used to. Memories of seeing each other every day came flooding back, and my heart was filled with nostalgia. From that day on, Greg and I started talking frequently again. We began sharing meals, working on assignments together, and spending more and more time with each other. Our relationship didn't remain just a childhood friendship like it had been in middle school. About six months after a reunion, we started dating and entered a new chapter as a couple. Every day felt incredibly happy. I was thrilled to have reconnected with Greg, to have ended up at the same college, and to have found each other again. When we first started dating, I was on cloud nine, convinced that everything was destined. Looking back now, it's a bit embarrassing to think about. We graduated from college without ever breaking up and both found jobs. A few years later, when our careers had stabilized, Greg proposed to me. Of course, I had no reason to refuse. I accepted his proposal and we happily became husband and wife. I wonder what kind of life awaits us from here on out. My heart was filled with excitement thinking about our life together. But little did I know that getting married would eventually lead to such pain. I never could have imagined it at the time. Greg's parents remembered me and congratulated us on our marriage. Naturally, my parents were thrilled as well. Our new life together was as wonderful as I had imagined. No matter how tired I was from work, coming home to Greg's warm welcome always made everything better. He became my rock. I often hoped that I could be some sort of support for him as well. But of course, I could never bring myself to ask him directly how he felt about me. Regardless, I continued living, leaning on his support. Two years into our marriage, our daughter was born. We named her Amy. She's really adorable. She really is. Every day, we'd gaze at Amy in my arms, marveling at how cute she was. There was no other word to describe it but happiness. Both our parents and Greg's parents were overjoyed at Amy's birth. She's absolutely precious. Since we had rented an apartment near Greg's parents' house, they came over to our place as soon as Amy was born. Greg's parents smiled as they looked at little Amy. I'm sure they felt a deep happiness from Amy's birth as well. A year later, my maternity leave ended, and I started relying on Greg's parents to help take care of Amy more often. Initially, I considered extending my leave or enrolling Amy in daycare, but Greg's parents offered to babysit her. Though I felt guilty at first, after discussing it with Greg, we decided to gratefully accept their help. As a result, I was able to focus on my work, knowing that Amy was in trusted hands. I was nothing but grateful to Greg's parents. Of course, I made sure to cherish our family time after work and on my days off. Both Greg and I were committed to building a better home, but that wish didn't come true. Five years after Amy was born, Greg's behavior started to change, which drastically affected our family dynamics. Hey, I told you to make sure this shirt was washed, didn't I? What? You never said that. Shut up. You were probably just spacing out. Just make sure it's washed by tomorrow. Greg's attitude had become domineering over time. He was no longer the Greg I knew. If you ask me what started it all, I couldn't tell you. The first sign that something was off was when Greg started becoming distant. What time will you be home tomorrow? Ah, uh, tomorrow? I'm not really sure. Okay, just let me know when you figure it out. Oh, uh, sure. 
No matter what I asked, he seemed distracted. Sometimes it took multiple attempts to get a response from him. At first, I chalked it up to him being tired from work. But as time went on, it became clear that something else was going on. Have you been feeling tired lately? Huh? What? Why do you ask? Oh, I don't know. Just a feeling. It's nothing really. Nothing at all. Even when I tried to talk to him about it, his answers were vague and unconvincing. I thought that if he didn't want to share, there wasn't much I could do. So, I decided to give him some space and just keep an eye on things. But one day, Greg's tone suddenly became harsh and he started lashing out at me. Are you even cleaning properly? Cleaning? What do you mean? Of course I am. Really? If you're cleaning, then why is my room such a mess? What? What are you talking about? You've always cleaned your own room. We agreed to that. I was completely caught off guard. We had always made it a point to stay out of each other's rooms, so his sudden demand that I clean his space left me bewildered. But Greg continued as if what he was saying was perfectly reasonable. This is why you're useless. You should take a cue from others around you. Take a cue? We agreed to stay out of each other's rooms. You can't just start criticizing me out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Just make sure it's done. Oh, and put my shoes away in the closet. The season's over. What? Are you serious? Greg said his piece and then left the house. I figured that if I did clean his room, he'd probably just get mad at me for invading his space. He could easily put away his own shoes. His behavior was unnerving, and I decided not to follow his orders. We were supposed to share household chores equally since we both worked, but somehow everything had fallen on me. When Greg came home, he'd either shut himself in his room or laze around in the living room. If I made dinner, he would complain and sometimes wouldn't touch it at all. I'd rather eat cheap instant noodles than this crap you call food. There's no need to say that. Even with Amy around, his harsh words had no filter. I tried to calmly reason with him, not wanting to scare her. But Greg wouldn't listen. You're so annoying. Forget it. I'm going out to eat. Wait. But Greg ignored my plea and stormed out, leaving the dinner table behind. Daddy. Oh, I'm sorry. Daddy's just really tired today. Tired. Amy looked scared of Greg. I began to wonder more and more if it might be better to divorce Greg and separate him from Amy. I found myself thinking that more and more often, but I couldn't bring myself to take that step. Was it really the right thing to do to just go through with a divorce? Greg was still Amy's father, and I couldn't deny that she might need her father in her life as she grew up. Even if he was a difficult father, wasn't it better for him to be there? And if I went through with the divorce, I would lose my connection with Greg's parents as well. I also wondered if it was right to take away the presence of her grandparents from Amy's life. Besides, a part of me still wanted to believe in Greg, the childhood friend I had known for so long. It's almost laughable now, looking back, that I wanted to trust him despite how terribly he treated me. I wonder why I didn't choose divorce sooner. I wish I could go back and confront myself about it. Greg seemed to behave perfectly whenever his parents were around. He was always such an obedient son. He was kind to me too, not at all like his usual self. Karen is amazing. She cooks great meals and she's so thoughtful. Oh, really? He would act all charming when we visited his parents, probably because it was convenient for him. But every now and then, he would slip up. Karen, 
bring me some drinks and snacks. This isn't enough. Hey, what's with that tone? I don't care if you're drunk or whatever. That's not how you ask someone for something. My mother-in-law never let it slide. She would always speak up on my behalf and reprimand Greg. Oh, uh, sorry. Greg would apologize, probably because he didn't want to upset his mom. He usually slipped up when he was drunk or eating. I figured he'd just let his guard down in those moments. But since his attitude at home never changed, I felt like his apologies weren't really meant for me, but for his mother. He showed no signs of wanting to change and seemed to live however he pleased. Even when we went out as a family, Greg never looked like he was having fun just bored. Hey, could you at least try to look like you're enjoying yourself? Amy's going to feel uncomfortable. Huh? I don't care. Let her feel whatever she wants. Why would you say something so cruel? I started to wonder what Greg really thought about our marriage and having Amy. On the day we got married, on the day Amy was born, didn't he feel the same happiness I did? I just couldn't understand what was going on in Greg's mind. His behavior only got worse over time. He frequently criticized my cooking, demanded I clean, and insisted that I show him more respect. I often found myself at a loss, wondering what on earth he was thinking. After living like this for about six months, I reached a breaking point. I realized I couldn't stay with Greg if he continued acting this way. I decided that I would either take drastic measures to change him or, if that failed, consider divorce. Greg, we need to talk. Huh? After Amy went to bed, I finally decided to confront him. You know, Greg, you've really changed from how you used to be. What are you talking about all of a sudden? You used to be kind. If you have something to say, just say it. I don't have time for this. Saying that, Greg turned his attention back to his phone. It seemed like he was playing a game. I couldn't help but wonder if I was being unreasonable to expect him to stop playing while we talk. I am considering divorce. The moment I mentioned the word divorce, Greg's demeanor shifted completely. What? Divorce? I just don't think I can continue like this. If you're willing to change, I might reconsider. But if things stay the same, it's not good for Amy either. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I'll change, I swear. Just please, I don't want a divorce. Greg seemed utterly desperate to avoid a divorce. I couldn't tell if he truly didn't want to lose me or if he was just clinging to the idea of being a married man. It was sad that I was questioning his sincerity even in that moment. It made me realize just how much I had lost faith in people. All right, I won't file for divorce right now. But in return, could you sign the divorce papers? What? Sign the divorce papers? I wouldn't be bringing this up if I weren't serious. Plus, I don't want this to be something we just brush off. Brush off. Greg repeated my words as if pondering them. After a deep breath, he finally spoke. Okay, I'll sign the divorce papers. But remember, if you do anything to ruin our family again, I won't hesitate to file them. Yeah, I understand. I handed him the partially filled out divorce papers. He paled at the sight of them. Here, is this what you wanted? With trembling hands, he signed the papers and handed them back to me. I, I'll change, I promise. Okay. Greg didn't display his usual harshness. Instead, he seemed genuinely remorseful. I thought that maybe, just maybe, it might be worth giving him one last chance. From the day he signed the divorce papers, Greg's behavior changed dramatically. He became kind and cheerful again, just like when we first got married. 
All right, Amy. How about you sleep with Daddy tonight? With Daddy? He started to truly act like a father to Amy, and I felt a sense of relief. It seemed like the threat of divorce had really gotten through to him. However, this peace didn't last long. The family we had built was soon shattered by Greg's secret. The day everything fell apart was when I attended a work-related dinner. Despite the lively atmosphere, I hadn't had a drop of alcohol, but I still felt a bit lighthearted. Since I had Amy to think about, I skipped the after party and headed home after the first round. I walked through the entertainment district, intending to hail a taxi. As I passed by what appeared to be an upscale hotel, I saw a familiar figure emerge from it. It was Greg. Beside him was a woman I didn't recognize, along with a small boy. Why? How? What's going on? I couldn't make sense of it. I was so overwhelmed with confusion that I didn't know what to say. Greg seemed just as stunned as I was. The noise of the bustling entertainment district only added to my disorientation. So, you had a family all along. I'm sorry. I blurted out the first words that came to mind, then quickly walked away. No, it's not what you think. Wait. Greg's voice called out behind me, but I was determined to get away from the area as fast as I could. What should I do now? Did Greg change because he had a family with someone else? No matter how much I tried to make sense of the situation, I couldn't. By the time I realized it, I had wandered past the entertainment district and the taxi stands, ending up in a deserted area. I glanced around, finding myself alone. For a moment, I thought maybe Greg would come after me, but he never did. I couldn't help but feel like an utter fool for even having a sliver of hope. Without stopping, I continued walking home. After witnessing such a scene, even if Greg tried to claim that the woman and child were strangers, I wouldn't believe it. I hurriedly took out the divorce papers I had kept and headed straight to the courthouse to submit them. Just like that, our marriage was over. It felt strangely anticlimactic, and I was left with an indescribable feeling. On the day Greg signed the divorce papers, I had warned him, if you do anything to destroy our family again, I'll submit these immediately. Had he forgotten those words? Or maybe he hadn't forgotten, which is why he had been so secretive. After submitting the papers, I went directly to Greg's parents' houses. When I arrived, I rang the doorbell. Greg's mother quickly came to the door. Welcome back. Did you have fun at the dinner? Yes, I did. Thank you. I wanted to act as if everything was normal. But despite my intentions, I couldn't bring myself to do it. Greg's mother seemed to notice that something was off. She looked at me with concern before gently inviting me inside. Mommy's home. Welcome back, Kara. Thank you. I thanked Greg's father while gently patting Amy, who had run up to hug me. Greg's mother still had that worried expression on her face. To be honest, I didn't want to discuss the divorce in front of Amy, but I knew I couldn't avoid it. Taking a deep breath to steady myself, I turned to Greg's parents. Well, I need to talk to you about something. I saw a flicker of tension cross their faces at my words. Then I told them everything, that Greg and I had divorced, the things he had put me through, and how I had prepared the divorce papers in advance. Greg's parents listened intently without interrupting, taking in every word I said. And that's what happened. So we're divorced now. That's unbelievable. Greg's parents were clearly in shock. After I finished speaking, they both seemed stunned, unsure of what to say. When I looked at Amy, who was standing next to me, 
I could see that she seemed to understand the situation. She just lowered her head in silence, not saying a word. Seeing that expression on her face made me feel an overwhelming sense of guilt for dragging her through all of this. I was truly sorry for putting her in such a situation. I'm so sorry. I can't believe our son. No, please, it's not. I don't even know what to say. It's just so shameful. We'll definitely have a serious talk with him. Greg's father said that, and Greg's mother quickly chimed in to apologize. Please, you're not to blame. They had done nothing wrong. I quickly told them not to feel guilty, and I continued. For now, Amy and I will stay at a hotel tonight. We'll probably move into an apartment starting tomorrow. I wish we could offer you a place to stay here, but with him possibly coming back at any moment, it's too risky. When you get to the hotel or when you move into the apartment, make sure you let us know, okay? I'm worried for both of you. Thank you so much. It warmed my heart to feel as though they genuinely saw Amy and me as their own family. I quickly booked a hotel and headed there with Amy in a taxi. Mom, what's going to happen now? Don't worry about anything, Amy. I promise I'll protect you. I hugged her tightly, trying to reassure her. No matter what, I couldn't let her suffer. The more I looked at her, the stronger my resolve became. That night, Greg didn't contact me. I couldn't help but wonder what he was thinking after being caught in such a situation. But his lack of contact made it clear that he had no intention of making amends. The next day. After finishing work, I was about to leave the office to pick up Amy. That's when Greg called me. I moved to a more secluded spot before answering. The moment I picked up, Greg's loud voice filled my ears. What the hell did you tell mom and dad? And what do you mean you already filed the divorce papers? It was obvious that his mother had called him and given him a piece of her mind. Everything I told them and the fact that I filed for divorce is the truth. There's no need to lie at this point, is there? And by the way, who was that woman and child? Don't tell me they're just some random people. That's not the point right now. Why do mom and dad know about us? Of course, it's the point. I told them when I went to pick up Amy. You might have tried to hide it, but it's too late now. I told you I'd file the papers if you did anything to break our family. And naturally, your parents were going to find out eventually. How could you not see that? But, but, I don't accept this divorce. I was so astonished by his response that I was momentarily speechless. Whether you accept it or not doesn't matter. I've already filed the papers. But I... What? Do you still have something to say? If not, then I'm going to... Wait. I... I want to explain about the person I was with that day. Was he trying to justify himself? I had already asked about his relationship with that woman but hearing it now wouldn't change how I felt. Still, I realized this might be the last chance I had to talk with Greg. Okay, curious about what Greg had to say in his final attempt, I agreed to meet with him. A few days later, I found myself at the restaurant Greg had reserved for our discussion. By this time, I had moved out of the hotel, settled into an apartment, and started a new life with Amy. It wasn't perfect, but I was beginning to find some peace. When I dropped Amy off with Greg's parents, I mentioned the upcoming conversation. Are you sure you want to go alone? Yes, it's a private room, but it's still in a public place. If anything happens, I'll ask the staff to call the police immediately. Please do that. And if anything else comes up, don't hesitate to contact us. We're on your side, Karen. Their words brought me genuine comfort. 
I arrived at the restaurant a bit early and was shown to a private room. Just in case, I discreetly activated a recorder and tucked it away in my bag. A few minutes later, the door opened and Greg entered with the woman from before. Oh, you're already here. Greg looked uneasy while the woman, whom he called Lisa, wore a smug smile. Wow, I saw your pictures, but you're way uglier in person. Hey, Lisa. Even after being scolded by Greg, Lisa showed no sign of remorse. Let's get this over with, shall we? Uh, yeah. I wasn't angry. I just wanted to get through this. Soon after, the food we had ordered began to arrive, and we started eating in an awkward silence. Lisa seemed to be enjoying herself, while Greg looked increasingly uncomfortable as he picked at his meal. After a few minutes, Greg finally spoke up. So, Karen, I'm really sorry. Sorry for what? I have no idea what you're apologizing for with just that. Well, I mean, it's just... You don't even know what he's apologizing for. Wow, how dumb can you be? Greg seemed flustered, while Lisa continued to taunt me. I didn't have the energy to react to her provocations. Apologizing out of the blue doesn't make any sense. For all I know, you could be apologizing for eating my ice cream without asking a month ago. Why would I do that? What are you even thinking? Then do you know what Greg is apologizing for? Well, that's, um... See? She didn't know either. Just as I was about to respond, Greg spoke up. Ah, uh, I'm really sorry for all the trouble I've caused for not taking care of our family, and for saying all those horrible things to you and Amy. And what exactly is Lisa to you? Bum. Why bother hiding it now? Just tell me. From the moment I saw them leaving the hotel together and considering Lisa's attitude today, it was clear as day that they were involved. And the fact that there was a child involved, I still couldn't believe it. Well, she's more like a girlfriend or something. A mistress? Greg hesitantly nodded in response to my question. It wasn't clear whether he felt guilty about his relationship with Lisa, but she certainly didn't seem to. Hey, Greg, you really don't have time to be clinging to a woman like this. Let's hurry up and get married already. Hey, Lisa, shut up. Oh, come on. Why not just get married already? I think it would be better for your child, too. Karen, stop it. I calmly continued to agree with Lisa's suggestion. Seeing Greg's tone grow increasingly agitated as he tried to stop Lisa and me, I realized that he was starting to lose his composure. Just go ahead and get married. Oh, and about the wedding? Shut up already. Finally, Greg exploded. I've had enough of this. Enough of what? Karen, divorcing you was the right decision after all. What? Why would you say that? How did it come to this? If Greg had been angry with me and Lisa both, that would have made sense. But why was his anger solely directed at me? When you first mentioned divorce, I tried to stop you because I didn't want to lose the money. Even today, I wanted to explain things to you so that maybe we could keep some sort of relationship going after the divorce. You know, just in case. And why would you want to do that? What's the point of keeping a relationship with me? Just to have some financial security in case things went south. What are you even saying? I couldn't understand Greg's thought process at all. The only thing that was clear to me was that he didn't care about me. He just cared about the money I earned. Shut up. I don't even know what I want anymore. If Greg didn't know what he wanted, I certainly didn't either. Greg, 
Do you even understand how things got to this point? What? Got to what point? I don't know how you and Lisa met, but if you hadn't tried to maintain two separate families at the same time, we wouldn't be in this mess. If you'd married me, you should have focused on our family. If you fell in love with Lisa and wanted to marry her, you should have asked me for a divorce first. I tried to reason with him, but Greg just remained silent. Well, it's too late to apologize now. It's clear you haven't truly reflected on your actions. So, I'll be demanding alimony from both you and Lisa. And Greg, you'll also be paying child support. What? Why? We're already divorced, so there's no need for alimony. Even after a divorce, I can still claim alimony within a certain period. I'll be handling everything through a lawyer, so expect to receive a formal notice. Greg had said they didn't have much money, but that wasn't my concern. I was determined to ensure they understood the gravity of what they had done by demanding the alimony and child support they owed. Wait, we told you we don't have money, and we have a child too. Yes, and so do I. You've done whatever you wanted until now, so think of this as your consequences catching up to you. Well, that's all I have to say. Hey, you old hag, stop right there. As I was about to leave the private room, Lisa called out to stop me. But it wasn't me who put an end to her outburst, it was Greg. Lisa, that's enough. We'll pay. But... Think about it. If we pay, we won't have to deal with her anymore. It's better to just pay up and be done with it rather than drag this out, right? Greg's words, treating me like the villain, made my blood boil. However, it was true that paying would end our direct involvement with each other sooner. Lisa seemed to accept Greg's reasoning and stopped complaining. As I had planned, I had my lawyer send them a certified letter demanding compensation and child support. Soon enough, the payments started coming through. Once all the money was paid, our ties would be completely severed. Though it would take some time, I couldn't wait for that day to arrive. But things didn't go as smoothly as I had hoped. One weekend, while I was at home, the doorbell rang. A feeling of unease washed over me, and I checked the door through the peephole. Standing outside were Greg and Lisa, both looking angry. I hadn't told them where I was living. So how did they find out? The thought that they might have been watching me made sweat break out across my forehead. Ignoring them would only mean they'd come back again and I didn't want to disturb my neighbors. After taking a deep breath, I opened the door. What's going on? Karen, so you are living here. Please, I'm begging you. Can you reduce the alimony and child support? Please, we really can't afford it anymore. So that's what this was about. They wanted to lower the payments. It was pitiful. I can't do that. And just so you know, the child support isn't for me, it's for Amy. I already asked for less than the usual amount, but if we reduce it even more, it will only hurt Amy. Can't you see that? But we have a child too. That's your problem. And frankly, you're the one who chose to have another child. Don't drag us into your mess. What did you just say? As expected, Greg was furious. He was likely upset about the you chose to have another child part, but it was the truth. Listen. It was clear they weren't going to leave until I agreed to reduce the payments. As I was trying to figure out how to get them to leave, I heard a voice from behind me. Hey, what's going on here? Dad. It turned out that Greg's parents had come over to visit that day. Despite the divorce, they remained close to Amy, continuing to visit her regularly. Although they were disappointed in Greg, they valued the relationship they had with me, 
and we kept in touch. They often came over to visit, so it wasn't unusual to see them. When I heard an argument, I didn't expect to find you two here. What? How did you know we were here? James, we just came to ask for a reduction in the alimony and child support. You have no right to call me Jake. Greg's father, James, was visibly angry at both Greg and Lisa. And how did you even find this place? I'm certain Karen didn't tell you. That's, well, it's none of your business, Dad. Then I'll ask directly, how did you find out where I live? Um. Greg fell silent when I questioned him. But my unyielding stare finally made him admit the truth. I, I followed you after work. What? I tailed you from the moment you left the office. That's how I figured out where you lived. I thought if we asked you to reduce the payments over email or phone, you wouldn't listen. So I decided to confront you in person. A chill ran down my spine. I couldn't believe it. I had actually been followed. I was stunned, unable to find the right words to respond. But it was Greg's father who stepped in to support me. You followed her. That's an unbelievably low thing to do. Were you planning to force her to agree to reduce the payments face to face? Forced. Greg's silence spoke volumes. He had been caught. The thought of what might have happened if Greg's parents hadn't been there made me tense up. So, that's exactly what you were trying to do. I'm ashamed to call you my son. Do you realize that if you hadn't cheated, there wouldn't be any alimony or child support to pay in the first place? Why should Karen have to make any concessions? and stalking her to find her home that could be considered a crime. Well, I mean... Did you know that? I couldn't be sure what Greg and Lisa were truly thinking, but it was clear that they were willing to go to any lengths to get what they wanted. The realization made me instinctively step back. But we had no choice. Karen wouldn't listen to us otherwise. Exactly. This woman wasn't willing to hear us out at all. Don't you dare blame Karen for this. She's done nothing wrong. Grow up and take responsibility for your actions. Greg and Lisa fell silent. I hoped for some sort of apology, but it was clear they had no intention of offering one. However, Greg's father made a declaration that quickly changed their tune. I'm cutting ties with you, Greg. What? Cut ties? What are you talking about? I already told you. I'm ashamed to have a son like you. I don't want a son who causes trouble for others. Don't ever show your face to us again. Do you understand? No, wait. That's too sudden. I didn't do anything that bad. Even at this point, he's still saying things like that. It was astonishing how little he understood the situation, leaving me utterly exasperated. Come on, don't say that. Karen, say something to help. Do you really think I'm going to defend you now? It's truly amusing. Even in this situation, you're still living in a fantasy world. I have to admire that level of delusion. What? How dare you talk like that? Greg was just saying something normal. Normal? Don't make me laugh. What James said was perfectly reasonable. Though they looked like they wanted to argue, I continued without pause. Anyway, don't show up in front of me again. And I'm definitely not reducing any of the alimony or child support. With that attitude, I'm even less inclined to give in. Wait. No, it's not wait. If you understand, then get out and don't come back. If you show up here again, I'll call the police. We're strangers now. Overwhelmed by my determination, Greg and Lisa had nothing more to say. I ushered them out of the house and slammed the door behind them. 
I half expected them to cause a scene outside, but they left quickly. I later heard that Greg and Lisa broke up. I found out when Greg sent me an email asking to get back together. Please, let's try again. Naturally, I had no intention of responding positively. I replied, letting him know that if he sent me another email, I would forward it to his parents. After that, the email stopped entirely. I have no idea what happened to the two of them since I cut off all contact. However, the alimony and child support payments kept coming, so I assumed they managed to get by somehow. After Greg and Lisa discovered where we live, Amy and I moved closer to Greg's parents. That said, they're not technically my in-laws anymore. To put it bluntly, they're just strangers now. Yet, despite that, they continue to care for us. My own parents had asked me to return home, but I refused. Moving back would mean quitting my jobs, and Amy had already settled into her school. She was growing into a lively, healthy elementary school student. Despite the turmoil in our family life, Amy had grown up strong and happy, thanks in no small part to Greg's parents. I couldn't help but feel incredibly grateful for the support I had received from those around me. With that gratitude in mind, I continued to focus on both work and household responsibilities, determined to give Amy the best life possible.